So, on the Corpse Paint Show, we invite you to elevate your life by going underground. And by that, we mean supporting independent art and independent music and independent movies. And to my right, I've got Becca Owen. Thank you for co-hosting today, Becca. Hi, everybody. And to her right is, is Darby Owen. Hi, Darby. Hello. He'll be monitoring our chat room. Thank you very much. Our normal co-host is Janie Slash. Thank you for filling in this time. And she'll be back next week. She is uh, returning from out of town, having joined the circus, believe it or not. She did. She ran off with the circus. She ran off the circus. But she's on her way back is what I hear. Can't wait to see her. I know. So. All right. A quick note that we've got a fellow musician in the Dallas area, Darren Beck from Pinkish Black. And we're showing his GoFundMe page right now. Consider going to this. It's GoFundMe and then Darren Beck, D-A-R-O-N. Uh, he is with the band Pinkish Black. He suffered a heart attack, I believe, too, in the month of August. And this is a medical, medical expense GoFundMe. So keep that in mind, please, if you got an extra few bucks uh, to help out a fellow musician, Darren. Hey, we got two great guests on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Monty from The Dam. It's going to be amazing. I know. Yes. Yeah. And then later in the show, Dale Patterson. Of course, from uh, Cult Never Dies. Yeah. We're excited to talk to him later in the show. Yeah, it's going to be We've, it, In the UK, it's midnight right now, so we appreciate these guys staying up Absolutely. late with us. Yeah. And so we're going to bring on Monty first. I think we've got him on the line right now. So let's, let's, let's talk. Let's do it. Hi, Bonnie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to talk to you. Yeah, you know, I, I've seen you on stage uh, for quite a few times, jumping up and down like a crazy man <laughs> while playing the while playing the keys. And uh, you know, I guess I just wanted to to ask you. It took the damn long enough to get a permanent keyboard player, didn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the first album didn't have any keyboards at all. <laughs> right. And it, it was really from uh, Machine Gun Etiquette onwards that keyboards yeah. started to appear. And uh, I guess they created a niche, and I filled that niche, I think. Yes, for sure. And, and so, you know, you, you've been on three albums. And, and, and let me just say, we invite anyone listening, watching to uh, go to the Facebook page, Corpse Paint Show, and make comments there. And we're monitoring the feed. Darby's monitoring the feed. And if you've got comments or a cool question, we certainly will try to get it uh, relayed to, um, to Monty. But, uh, Monty, I, you know, I just wanted to say, I, I was listening to Dark Asteroid earlier today, and I'm thinking your signature is just all over it. And, <laughs> and I almost wish I could, you know, I could mix it to be one hour long instead of only the 14 minute version, you know? <laughs> I think we stretched it a bit, but, you know, for, for certain people's uh, kind of. Um, <coughs> Uh, sphere of musical activity. We, we stretched it a bit by having 11 min minutes, but there we go. You know, yeah, we could do a 20 minute version. I mean, I was playing with the uh, Sumerian Kings last night, and yeah. that meant to be that kind of limb. <laughs> yeah, so every song is good 20 minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do Sumerian Kings play any damned? No, no, no. We've, play around stuff it's, it's kind of jazzy psychedelic stuff yeah so it's uh, very loosely structured very improvised 
a bit of Captain Beefheart kind of uh, vocal and uh, yeah, spacey jazz stuff. <laughs> what, what it is. Well, here at Corpse Main Show, we love space rock. Absolutely. We love we love psychedelic. Yeah. We love all of it. So there's this great song called Dark Asteroid on uh, So Who's Paranoid? And mm. it just goes on forever and ever. And I love that. I yeah. love it. <laughs> and so, but but wait, do you sing on that song? Uh, I think the backing vocals, I think. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> I, I guess, you know, people don't realize Monty is a singer also. Yeah, yeah, so I, I do my best. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, but who is the main vocals on Dark Astro? Is it Captain? Oh, it's Dave. It's actually Dave Bailey. I know sounds it sounds so, different, yeah. but it is him. Yeah, it, it, it just an interesting song. I mean, I love that album so much, and I think it's it's I don't know. It's unknown. It's un, underappreciated. It, it's underrated. Uh, but. But there's all these great songs, and then you whack me with this dark asteroid at the end of it, and uh, boy, I just I, I just love it. Yeah, I mean it's a tribute. I expect you know it's a tribute to Sid Barrett, the yep. captain wrote. And uh, I mean years back, I I sort of realised that we had this uh, common interest when I heard uh, his first album, the uh, what's it, Women and Captain's first yes. album. There's a song on there called A Nice Cup of Tea, and I thought, oh, this sounds like Sid Barrett's uh, solo stuff, you know. And uh, sure enough, he was into it, and I thought, yeah, you've got, definitely got a company, you know, common interest there. Right. Did, did, how did it happen that you got invited to join? Was it, well, you, you, you tell us, please. Okay, well, I mean, first of all, I met Captain, um, at, I think it was at the Zap Club, it was at the Zap Club, uh, which was a fantastic performance venue place in Brighton, which doesn't exist anymore now. Uh, and I got to know him over years, but I didn't play with him for a, a long time until, well, first of all, <laughs> there was a character who, who used to come to the Zap Club and called himself Captain Stupid. And Captain Stupid is actually on Captain Sensible's uh, Revolution Now record uh, on a track called Vosine. And I used to do gigs with him and Captain Sensible, the Sensible one, he used to come and see us and, and, and uh, uh, come along and record things. And we had a session at his house uh, way back when. But it didn't really, I didn't really start playing with Captain until it was the, uh, the Dr. Space Toad uh, it was uh, Dr. Space, oh, what do we call it? Club Space Toad, that's right. It was at a pub called the Albert, the Prince Albert, at the top of uh, near the Brighton station. And uh, that, that was a kind of jam session kind of thing that happened every Monday while I was studying art psychotherapy at the time. So I'd come back from the art psychotherapy and I'd bring a percussion, I was playing drums there originally and uh, just jamming along with, with Captain and uh, Dr. Space Toad and our friend Roy, otherwise known as Captain Barrington White. And uh, then someone suggested we make a, a band out of that. So we went on tour uh, with me playing drums originally until yeah. the drum kit fell apart. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> there's the drum kit that was my, my uncle left me. And uh, it fell, fell to bits and uh, so I started playing keyboards with them and we've got another drummer and yeah that's how it all started so so wait a second you're talking about the dr space toad tour where you were the drummer that's right yeah okay okay so beck and i are looking at each other you mentioned art psychotherapy that's right yeah i was studying i studied that at goldsmith's college in london for two years that's awesome yeah i saw i saw that uh your other job is uh a psychiatric nurse, is that correct? That's right, yeah, yeah. still do that. I work in a place uh, called Partridge House. Yeah. It's a nursing home in Bethingdean where, uh, for people with elderly mentally ill, so it's mostly people with dementia. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be interesting, though. It's got to be... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's rewarding. We have some great carers there, really good people, and it's well run yeah. and uh, a nice purpose-built place. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, yeah. neat. Yeah. That's the things cool. we find out on the corpse page. I know, right? I know. Yes. I know. So <laughs> that is so good. Funny. So, all right. So, so anyone who is making a comment 
uh, or a question. Now, on our Facebook page for this live feed, we're gonna we're gonna grab one of those and just randomly select a winner and send him this factory sealed version of Damn Damn Damned, which Amani, I know you're not on it. I'm sorry. Uh, the, Don't mind. I've got it in my collection. I was, <laughs> I was listening to it back in the day. Yeah, of course. Down to it in my bedroom. <laughs> now, as Becca and I know, whenever you travel through London. I don't know. It just seems every tube station has a poster of this yeah. image on it, and I don't know. It's because there's a sale at HMV or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's I don't even know if there is an HMV anymore. I so um, <laughs> um, I don't know. So iconic. Oh, this this cover. Yeah. yeah so monty has been on three studio albums, mm -hmm. a couple of singles, and a lots of live recordings. Yeah. And he's been with the band since about '96. Yeah. So. Shame on you, damn fans, if you don't know Monty Oxymoron. <laughs> I think they do by now. <laughs> Whether they like me or not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. Well, I got to tell you, your, finger, your fingers are flying on the keyboards, and I, and I know some of the songs that really that really demand it, you know? Hey, um, do you like touring in the States when you come over this way? Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I think we have a really nice response over there and a wider range of people coming to see us uh, than perhaps in the UK. So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely enjoy it. Wider um, range, uh, you mean uh, punks and metalheads and, and garage rock fans, psych rock fans, space rock fans and... Yeah, yeah, just a bit, bit more, bit more wider, <laughs> wider range. I think in, in Britain there's a lot of people who come to see, you know, the, 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 the old punks. There's nothing wrong with the old punks at all. But um, they tend to want a particular thing, and the, it was the states we, we get more appreciation for what we do, whatever we do, people like it. You know, like we mentioned, Dark Asteroid, we used to play that, and we played it in Britain, and it didn't go down that well. Uh, huh. We get the feeling in the states you can do pretty much anything, and uh, you know, people like it. So. Good. Well, good. Something good about the United States. I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh man, Monty, it's just great to talk to you. All right, so you played initially on tours with Patricia Morrison, right? That's right. Yeah, she 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 joined the. We just very briefly had uh, Paul Gray at the very beginning, and then she stepped in and uh, played for, for God, quite a few years. Hey, um. How, how is is Captain okay now? I, I, didn't he have some broken ribs after falling off off the stage? He did, and uh, we soldiered on. I mean, we you know when that happened, we thought, God, what's going to happen, or can we carry on or not? And he just after a few days, he said, Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And uh, so we we got him. <laughs> we, he had to sit down to play, so we found him this uh, toilet. And played on the toilet yeah yeah we saw that that's crazy and uh and he carried on and he, he's in, he's a real soldier as captain you know he really he uh, it would take a lot to take him out <laughs> there's no doubt about that i i agree with you so but it must have been frightening when it happened was it mid gig or? oh it was awful i uh it was mid gig and uh when he went down i, I was just kind of frozen i was just oh my god uh what's happened you know because because uh, you know, fall into that barrier, and there's those, all those metal uh, stuff. You know, the, that they're holding up the barrier, and I thought, God, he could have done anything. Could have happened. Right. He could have, you know, could have smashed his head in or anything. You know, uh, I was just, yeah, I was just throwing up in a freeze response. Not, not very proactive nursing, I'm afraid. <laughs> but uh, there we go. <laughs> And then you obviously had to stop that gig and... Yeah, we did, yeah, yeah. And he went to the hospital and stuff and uh, yeah. so he checked him out and it was just the rib, rib but it must have bloody hurt and uh, difficult to sleep. It's, it's uh, got to be nothing worse than a broken rib. No. When you can't turn over because you've got this bloody, yeah. you know, broken rib. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's difficult enough sleeping on two of us as it is. So. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm mad at that. And there's long distances between cities in this country. Yeah, no kidding. It, yes, I nearly went mad on one of them. I don't know if you've seen the uh, song I wrote in the back of the bus, but uh, I don't think I'd better 
repeat it now because it's uh, <laughs> completely just swearing. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're okay with that on this show, actually. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's on my, it's on, on my Facebook <laughs> somewhere in fact, but, but then. <laughs> so, um, so Becca, so this is something I think Monty was involved in for a while in Britain. And Monty, correct me if I'm wrong. There's did these free kind of free uh, uh, almost uh, impromptu festivals happen with the space rock bands? Is this in the in the in maybe in the 80s, 90s? Well, we just did one actually uh, with the Sumerian Kings. It was called uh, Cosfest. Uh, the, the, the guys called Cosmic King with a K, yeah. and so. <laughs> So we played Cosfest, which was very, very nice. It's really, really nice vibe. Quite a small, small festival. I don't know if it's free. I think you have to pay something. But it, you know, it's a real old style, like the Glastonbury was at the beginning style festival. So that was that was good fun. And and so I, I imagine there's a lot of just festival goers and and hippie types and. Uh, girls with hula hoops, and uh, you're you're looking at everybody, right? Yeah, kind of thing. I mean, a lot a lot of people. There was a lot of connection uh, with, with with the band Gong. Who, yeah. uh, I, was, I knew David Allen I was a friend of David Allen's, and uh, so it was, a, it was nice to see people uh, connected to that uh, that that scene and that circuit of things. Hey, um. I like the fact that you've got this solo album out, and I sent in our engineer an uh, image of it. Hopefully, we can pop it up. It's um, and I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank on the title until, <laughs> until we see it here on the screen. But um, and it's got it's got dark asteroid on it, right? Or no, no, it, it's, uh, it's got um, nature's dark passion. That's, that, that's it. There we go. Yeah, visions of ecstasy, aunt. Right. That's the one. Yeah. Kind of a, a play on uh, yeah, and a play on another damn song. Well, I, I, was, I was thinking of Jiglo, aren't you? That's the Barrett song, but uh, <laughs> yeah. there you, there you go. Yeah. So, well, very good. It's still, a. I think it's still available on A Well for artists without a label. People can download it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know. I hope so. Yeah. I doubt. <laughs> Well, I downloaded, I feel guilty about this, but I downloaded some songs from Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and here I am, I'm the one preaching. You should always buy the physical yeah. copy, which is what which is what we encourage you to do when you support an artist, yeah. is put something physical in your hand. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, so uh, there, there is no physical copy of that. It is just a download. Oh, well, oh, okay. <laughs> as long as you're still profiting from it, right? Sorry? I said, as long as you still profit from it, right? Well, I get a little yeah. bit every now and again. It's hard to, yeah. I, you know, unless you're super stellar stratosphere, it's yeah. hard to make money as an artist, it, it really as, a, is. as a musician. It really is. Yes. Yeah. It is. You make most of the most of it from gigging and uh, and selling merch and stuff these days. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Da the Damned have a fall tour. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. yeah Europe, England. England and the US mostly. We've got we've got a couple of gigs in France, but it's mostly England and the US. Okay, I think I looked at this. It was just some select uh, US cities, um, and uh, so that means that we might have to travel to go see them. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any in in Texas. I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, we did that huge tour last last year. It was yeah. just great. We went everywhere, but uh, this time was a bit, a bit more foreshortened. <laughs> I saw, I saw you on two of those dates, and of course uh, the famous um, toilet over there that mm -hmm. that captain was sitting on, and and but I got to tell you, he just had the greatest spirit and smiles and uh, energy, and and still seemed to me hit all the notes or most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. That's I mean, Dave also uh, right. hurt his shoulder. He dislocated his shoulder at one gig on that tour as well. So. So everybody was getting injuries except me. I don't think I had any. <laughs> <laughs> well, is how's Dave then? Oh, he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. And and so great having Paul Gray back. Yes. Yeah. I think he's an incredible player. I mean, you can hear it on the album. Just amazing 
um, arrangements and, and uh, the, uh, what he does with the bass. It's just, just he's a virtuoso. It's great. Yes, he just he flies over everything. It's not just he, a thump a thump. It is like it's aerial, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. On uh, what was it? This, um, oh, what's it called? I don't care. That's right. We he had a, an incredible solo that he just worked out. Yeah, and they got me to double it up on uh, like a cello sound. I don't think you can hear that now in the mix anymore. But uh, it was it was incredible. I thought, crikey, how can I do this? <laughs> and we did gradually, bit by bit. You know, Tony the Scotties and did go bit by bit. You just do do do. You know, each and it was it's extraordinary what he did with it. Just extraordinary. Yes, yes. And hey, congratulate. Well, mentioning um, I don't care, and, and that's, of course, Evil Spirits. And so, big high fives for a top 10 release in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, I, yeah, just big thumbs up, Mondi. I mean, this is fantastic. This is yeah. a testament right there to the, the strength of your fans and the appeal to the new fans. Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, we, we are so lucky to have a, a really good fan base. People who actually buy stuff, you know, they will buy CDs and yeah. Fireball, yeah. <laughs> as I do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's great, you know, and they come to the gigs. It's fantastic, yeah. Yes, indeed. And uh, there's so many groups online of damned fans and, and, and support groups like that. So yeah. lots yeah. of them. Yeah. Lots of different groups. It is, and it's and it's a wide age range too, which is really nice. You know, it's hard for you and your kid to like the same band. You know, but you could with yeah, the damned. But you yeah. can with the damned, and it's really yeah. cool. So it's really cool. Uh, well, I think I think things have changed. I think it's become less tribal and uh, sort of exclusivist like it used to be in the old days. I think. People can explore different kinds of music, you know, it's possible to be like rock and jazz and classical and anything you want these days. It's not so fixed. It used to be when we were back in, oh no, it's not cool to like that or like this. Or, you know, you have to be hardcore. Right. Bad. Right. And for, I think fortunately it's not so bad these days. Yeah, good. But yeah, I've always thought of the damn that way. It, it just seemed you guys, you guys were never. And, and the early band was never tribalist. And so Dave loved Garage and he had that, even that Elvis period, I think, you know? And of course, yeah, yeah. of course, Captain likes what you like and that is the psychedelic Sid Barrett. And, uh, and, then, and then Rat, he was more into glam. You know, so all these influences came, but I know, I know the band early years never wanted to be just thought of as, as hardcore punk, you know? Hey, so- no, what, uh, that point punk hadn't formed nobody really knew what it was it was well i mean i suppose they knew there was a connection with the stooges and the mc5 and that kind of music yeah but it wasn't a form genre it was all new and different and you know people were playing around with it and doing different things it was As very it interesting be. period all yeah. those wacky people like that i used to listen to on john peel who just uh, john peel was the the, the dj we used of to listen to yeah. Of, uh, Radio One, and uh, they just played all sorts of people just making all kinds of crazy records. You know, yeah. just make one single or a few singles or something, and some people carry on to do albums. But you know, it's a really interesting period of music. So we got two comments from our live feed. All right, Darby, what you got? Just, yes. Yeah, speak real close to that mic. Um, our first question is: Has he ever played Grimly Fiendish live? Yeah, yeah, we played that. Yeah, quite a few times. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, yeah, the last tour I saw you on, it was. Play I'm trying to remember every song now. I should have written them down. All right. Yeah. Good. Good question. Our second. Yeah, we had, in fact, we had. Uh, you know, we've got um, Chris Cool, who's a local jazz uh, trumpet player, really, really good jazz band trumpet player, Brighton plays with us sometimes and he's played on that he's played the solo <laughs> yeah that there you go yeah. th yes yes very good in fact we did it at the albert hall of course we did yeah. yeah the 40th anniversary albert hall yeah yeah what else you got darby um our second is will paul be on u.s dates no no he won't be i'm afraid 
He's uh, got he's got a very good job with the musicians' union, and he's reluctant to give that up because it's got um, it's got um, you know pension and everything is a real proper job. And mm -hmm. uh, he, I mean, he, as it is, he's trying to double juggle two jobs at the same time. Mm -hmm. He's playing with us in the UK, doing stuff online for them. So, no, so, so, so obviously we'll get Patricia back, right? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think she was bad enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was a great question. I didn't know. So no Paul on U.S. dates. Oh, yeah. dang. Oh, well. Okay. But we've, our, our friend, our friend uh, John Priestley, is, is, is a great bass player. And he was, he was a very good singer as well. So he could give, give, give some backing vocals. He, he'll be doing those gigs. Right on. All right. All right. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, hey, Monique, so I started the All Damned radio station, <laughs> so, and it's, so it's called All Direction, Damned All Directions, and uh, so it, it includes uh, your solo work and all the members' solo work and side projects and and all of, all of that stuff, So, and obviously there's a lot there, so um, if you've got any of the outtakes from, uh, from, from Evil Spirits, just go ahead and send them to me, and, uh, and we'll see if we can put them on air. I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. Well, no, that's a thought. Well, I've got the, there's the original version of the procrastination. I just sang and played it into, into this little uh, device here. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I think, I think I read that you went into the studio with 20, 20 songs, and uh, the record has 10 on them, so I'm thinking to myself, I went to college, so that means there's 10 left. And so where are those? <laughs> so they're, brew well, they're brewing there, in there. The are some, there are some, yeah, there's definitely some stuff left over. I mean, some of them were not finished. They were like kind of um, musical ideas. Yeah. Certainly Dave had a lot of those. He had a lot of um, almost sound, like film soundtrack ideas that uh, that were there. And then there, there are some, some other songs as well. That, another one pinch did and yeah. one i did and there's sort of various things <laughs> it's got to feel great too when you bring a song in and 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 you know the band loves it and there it is you you've got you've got songs on so who's paranoid and uh and so in so much of your contribution on evil spirits so yeah uh, well yeah i suppose the main yeah. thing is uh, uh is uh, procrastination on that one yeah uh, but, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm still, I'm still, there's a new. Actually, I'll mention this now. There's a new version of uh, Nature's Dark Passion on my website. Oh, okay. Because I was never quite happy with uh, either my version or, or Dave's or, or the way it was sung. I mean, Dave's voice is fantastic, of course, but just the way it was sung. So I wanted to, I wanted to try and I wanted it to be to sound a bit like. Um, uh, oh God, what's he doing? Nat King Cole kind of having a nervous breakdown. Uh, <laughs> so I tried to, tried to make it so it's probably still not quite right, but, uh, but there is a version there. All right, that's a good heads up. <laughs> Go ahead, Darby. Um, so this is from Alex, and he says, cliche question, but I feel like everyone has one. Favorite songs to play live? Oh gosh. No, that's so difficult because uh, you know for the whole period of the you know the dance there's so so many oh uh, god um, mm -hmm. I really like I like Stranger in Town that's good fun yeah um, oh, I like them all uh, oh, what else to <laughs> I like ones that allow a bit of jamming you know a bit of like looking at you or uh, yeah you know, one that you, can, you can jam around, around a bit uh, oh yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, it's quite difficult. <laughs> Monica, can I can can I throw one out? It's uh, history of the world. Um, you don't play it live too much, but that's that seems like fun for you. Yeah, no, we have we have played it a lot. I think maybe we played it less recently because we had played it a lot before. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. But yeah, 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 it's good fun. Good. That, no, that's a good question. We're, we're going to wrap up with Moni shortly, so if you've got a question, hit us up quick on Facebook and just put it there in the comments, and uh, Dari will monitor that. So. Yeah. 
Man, um, we got to talk again soon and, and uh, jump more into space rock and uh, psych rock and uh, all of that. All these nope. influences came together for the damned. Yeah. yeah man. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, I hope that you are enjoying your time off and touring, and then you get, you know you get back on that bus and and there's that life again. It's is it is it something where you've just got to be kind of mentally prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it doesn't come easy for me, I must admit, being on the bus. Because uh, I'm quite a solitary person, I'm quite like now in space. And then you're suddenly with everybody <laughs> all of the time. And uh, I don't sleep terribly well as well. But uh, yeah, we, we're doing it again this week. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. It'd be, it'd be good. All right, all right, good. Yeah. So I, you almost are probably like, well, I'll just catch a plane and meet you in, in Berlin <laughs> or wherever, right? So, <laughs> so next time we are all in Europe, we just got to go catch we them go. And anywhere yeah. in the United States. Sure. I know sure. you have fans that go to every gig, Monty. Yeah, yeah I know. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and you look out there and you recognize them and then they come backstage and say hi? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. There are people from all over the place. I would do awesome. that if I had the means. Yeah. Just tour, just with the damn. That'd be so fun. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, just keep bringing that chaos. We love it, Monty. We appreciate you so much, man. And I think we have one more question. Too. Okay, so good. More. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it, Darby. Um, this is from Don. Monty, what do you think of Philadelphia? Oh, I like Philadelphia. <laughs> I like Philadelphia. It's, it's funny enough that it's... Uh, one of the places I went to first in the States because uh, my uncle uh, lived there. We lives in, he lives in New, New Jersey now. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was, it was at South Street, is it? There's a really good bookshop there and some interesting alternative shops and stuff. Yeah, I like for the good. Good. Very good. Good. Well, good. Yes. Likes the US. Right. And Philadelphia and freedom and all of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man monty i i just uh want to say thank you and please give us uh you know big high fives from all of us to the rest of the band okay thank you so much thank, thank you very much thank you <laughs> we're, we're gonna stay in touch and i'm gonna send you you know a copy of this and and uh, maybe down the road we can chat again i'd certainly love it monty yeah excellent yeah, it's been really enjoyable Thank you so much. Thanks again. Thank you. Go. Monty Oxymoron. So cool. The legendary Damned. I know. What a band. It, yeah. What a band. What a band. What, what a, a band. band. All right. So anyone who made a comment, we're going to choose one randomly, and I will ship this to you, but we'll message you first to get your ad shipping address, et cetera. So. Okay. All right. Now, I, I just I really appreciate the fact that we can talk directly to him. It's really and, cool. Yes, and stayed up late for us in the UK yeah. and, and such. Yeah, because it is really late. So. Our next UK guest is uh, Dale Patterson. Yeah. Yeah, from awesome. Cult Never Dies, and he runs a publishing house and uh, is is just Thank an intense, you. intense interviewer. It's gonna be cool. Uh, and historian of black metal. Okay. So we'll try and get Dale on on the line right now, but. Thank you guys very much. So we might have some more comments coming, uh, Darby, you know, for our next guest. Um, not any questions yet, but we have a lot of comments. Uh, for, uh, for Dale or for Monty? They're for Monty. Okay. Uh, you wanna... I haven't gotten any for Dale yet. Okay. You want to give us a couple of the coolest ones? Sure. Um, this is from James. He okay. says, see you in the States this autumn, Monty. Smile. Yeah. Can't wait to hear some of Evil Spirits live. I can't think of a clever question. And um, yeah, all right. James is a big fan. All right, good. Um, <laughs> good. All right, I think we got Dale with us. Hello. Hello. Hey, Dale. Hello. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. I think we can hear you fine. Man, it's good to talk to you. And we uh, we chatted earlier, and I'm just so intrigued, man, by the forthcoming work on Rotting Christ. So we. Yeah, it was a T-shirt there. Yeah, do you do you like? Have you seen this one? Uh, yes, I think I've probably seen most of the Rotten Crush. Shows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I thought I had something special here. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, there are some people who, 
who just love the Beatles or some people who just love the Clash. You know? But, you know, to me, I just don't think Rotting Christ uh, has done any wrong. I, I don't. I just, this is a band that I could just listen to at any time. And I just, I, I think Rituals was so strong. And look, I, I don't mean to do all the talking here, Dale. This is for you. Uh, I agree. I think actually it's interesting you had the damned on uh, or Monty from the Crowns because I think uh, that's a band that always evolved and kind of um, they kept the quality but, but changed their style and uh, Rotting and Christ are, are a similar, you know, as a sort of a black metal uh, example of that where you, where you can change your style and, and uh, keep surprising people but, but always sort of maintain a level of quality so it yeah. seemed to happen. And, and I get the impression you like, you sort of like black metal that's sometimes uh, pushing the envelope of what black metal could really be, uh, whether it be ambient or slightly um, industrial or, 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 or gothic, right? Yeah, I think uh, what makes black metal what it is is the fact that it has these two kind of very different but uh, complementing sides to it. And one side is this very traditional conservative kind of uh, yeah about you know uh, an element where music is sort of paying tribute to itself and drawing on the on you know what's come before and keeping certain values alive and the other side is in black metal is that you have this very uh, envelope pushing kind of experimental uh, revolutionary side and I think that's what makes black metal what it is because both you know keep keep each other in turn in a way Agreed. So, Becca, so I and I sort of sort of parallel the, the, the birth of black metal, sort of like the punk scene when it emerged in the late 70s. It was it was a, a stunning example of what extreme art could be. Right. And um, and to me, equally as exciting as when I first experienced punk, because it was it was threatening, it was dangerous, unpredictable, dark. Yeah. I, I loved all that. And so Cold Never Dies is his publishing house right. writing this great book about uh, forthcoming, mm -hmm. uh, about um, uh, Rotting Christ. And awesome. the, the other band, which it seems like Sockus is just so prolific, is um, Thou Art Lord. And, and I think a lot of metalheads over here don't know about them. I mean, it's always been a kind of side project. So I think it, it doesn't have anywhere near as you know, high profile as Rotting Christ. Um, so, I mean, it's a great band, but it's definitely, for everyone involved, it's a side thing. So, but we do talk about the band in the new book, and it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, if you're into Rotting Christ, then it makes a lot of sense to check out that at all. you got to check them out. Did, did Sakis and Temis, if I'm pronouncing it right, get arrested recently for security concerns? In Georgia. This year, yeah, they were arrested, I think it was April, um, on suspected terrorism charges. So that was kind of an uh, exciting addition to the touring experience, I guess. <laughs> so simply because they're in a band called Rotting Christ, or, or somebody didn't like the way they looked, or? A bit of that, but there was also the people had kind of reported that these guys were coming, the, the Themis brothers, and that these were you know, Satanists. Mm -hmm. uh, Possibly terrorists, and Georgia is obviously a very conservative country. Yeah. So there was a degree that somebody had kind of warned the the officials at the uh, the I guess the airport, and also the I guess the I don't know the justice system or, the, or someone in that. But they were it was it was just those two members that were arrested. So it was they somebody had sort of singled out these Demis brothers as being sort of potentially you know dangerous to, in, yes. to them, what's their values, perhaps. But I mean, what, a, what, a, how awful it must have been, a, a, night, a night in jail, I think, right? And then, and then finally they kind of make it out. Yeah, yeah they were lucky in a way that, I mean, it's obviously something we talk about in the book as well, but social media has sort of had a, or the internet had an aspect to play um, in their favor because the other members were able to kind of contact people and let them know what was happening and caused enough of an outcry that they you know would, would be freed um but obviously the name like that they've had a lot of problems i mean when they when they came to america for the first time uh there were attempts to stop them coming um <laughs> there was, was a republican uh, uh a guy that was standing for office uh 
he, he made a big statement against them and yeah so it, it, it's 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 not anything new but probably yeah. georgia's a bit more extreme than some of the countries so, so i want to hear the conversation of the the greek embassy you know um, making the phone call hey our guys they're in rotting christ but you need to let them free <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think there was uh, there was also a degree of uh, protest from within Georgia itself. I think people who were not even necessarily interested in metal or necessarily interested in black metal kind of came out in their their defence because it was a sort of freedom of speech issue. Gotcha. So again, that was something which was mobilised. I think by social media, by the internet. Um, so you wonder what would have happened twenty years ago if this had happened because. Right. Yeah, it was, a, it was a different, different world. Yeah. So, is it fair to say Rotting Christ is a 30 year anniversary this year? Mm -hmm. So, they first came out in 1998. Um, they were a grind core band at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, very different to what we see now. But still, you know, two of the two of the three members are still in the band, obviously, Sackis and Demis. Um, so, yeah, this, this, that was part of the reason for doing this book, really, because it's a 30-year anniversary, and that seemed like a sort of apt time to, to look back at all the things that happened. So the title is Non Servium. Yes. Right, which is um, Latin for I will not serve, which is apparently what Satan said to, to, to God. Right? So I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's also the band's second full-length album. Right, so yeah. The, the kind of pays tribute to that as well. Uh, but yeah, it's um, I will not serve, which I guess it kind of sums up the, the spirit of the band, really, and hopefully the black metal in general. Yeah. So and along that same line, okay, can I bring up Dave Mustaine? This is probably a, a part in your book, right? So yeah. I, I don't know. I have no respect for him. I don't. I don't. And here he is trying to make trouble at a festival because one of the other bands playing at the festival is called Rotting Christ. And I guess this is after Dave had a religious conversion. So I, I don't know. I, I I don't want I don't know. I don't want to dig a big hole here. But you probably <laughs> cut. You probably cover all this, right? It, yes. I, yeah. I mean, I think it, it's a shame because obviously Megadeth was a very important band in metal, especially up to sort of mid '90s or early '90s. Um, but yeah, I don't think it was a particularly it's not good if bands within metal are trying to censor yeah. other bands. Yeah. I think that's um, that's a dangerous, a dangerous precedent, really. Or, and also because it wasn't. I can understand if it was a a show of his band. I think then you have some rights to say who, who will support you. But it was a festival, yeah. And you know, there's always bands at festivals that you probably don't like or agree with. Um, and you know, Stripe have played gigs with with. You know, where there's um, satanic bands on, on the lineup. So so I don't think it's not really endorsing a band to have them on the same on the same festival. You just have to sort yeah. of get over that a bit. I mean, Tom Mariah is supposed to be Catholic. I mean, you know, yeah. it throws up a lot of questions all then. It does. I know. I'm baffled too. <laughs> you and I ponder the same things at night. You know, they keep us awake. So. Yeah. Hey, can I mention two movies, okay? Because we love movies here, too. Okay. And one of them, of course, no one is excited about, and that is probably the trash heap that Lords of Chaos is going to be. And I've heard everything that Necro Butcher has said, that, you know, that they're not participating and that don't support it. And, um, I think I think Yorn's come around a little bit since okay. he made those statements. The last time I spoke to him, he said he didn't seem so angry about, about the film. All right. Um, but... Obviously, black metal fans in general are still quite annoyed. I'm not totally sure what's going on with that film because it, it seemed to disappear a bit after it was in the cinemas. So I don't know if they're waiting for a Netflix. You know, it, it doesn't seem to get a wide cinematic release. So, it, oh, is it out? Well, it's been. I know people that have seen it. Okay. So it's been finished, mm. but. Uh, I don't think it was shown at any mainstream cinemas yet. I think it's just been film festivals and premiere, you know, sort of special events and things. So I, gotcha. I don't quite know what, what the future for that film is. All right. And um, so we've got a chat room that is on the Facebook page where this live feed is. We are live feed. So if you've got comments right now, you can talk, you know, to 
throw them out to us, or perhaps a question for Dale, um, and we'll we'll select it and and, uh, and and chat about it. So um so type it in. All right, the other movie would be Curse of Valberga. I'm very excited about, and Nicholas seems to be energetic about this. Man, I'd love to talk to him some more about it. We love extreme horror, and that's what it appears to be. Right, he's a Slovenian director, I think, if I remember right. Even better. Yeah, it's a very interesting country, Slovenia. Um, as far as I understand, that director is fairly high profile, sort of a mainstream director. So doing a film with Nicholas and Adam from Bayham Office, I think a little bit unexpected. Um, yeah. But I don't think about that film, so I can't really offer much. Okay, okay. So back to Sackis, I, the, I don't know, he's, he's like, I, I believe mid forties now. So he, I'm thinking about this. He must've started the band when he was 16 or something. And I'm thinking, way to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of those guys, most of the black metal and uh, extreme metal bands from the eighties and early nineties were teenagers when they formed. And um, I was thinking about that actually, I was talking to someone about that in the pub the other night. Is, it's kind of curious how in the 80s and 90s, most of the really important black and death metal bands, and maybe metal bands in general, were in their teenage years or early 20s. And now I can't think of any really important, or very few really important uh, extreme metal bands that are in that age group. In fact, yeah. most of the bands, even new bands, uh, the musicians are in their 30s or 40s. So it's a curious, you know, if you think about Emperor, Bayamoth, Dark Throne, Mysticum, Cradle of Filth, or, you know, whoever you name from those early, from the sort of early 90s, all of those guys were aged between sort of 15 and 26, 25. So, yeah, I don't know why, I don't know why there's been that shift. I mean, there are still obviously musicians that age making black metal and death metal, but they're not in the, they're not at the forefront of it. Um, yeah, that, that is an interesting point. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Mysticum. I, I just, uh, you know, th there's a band right there that's like, fuck you, we don't care. We're going to yeah. do things our way, and we don't need a drummer. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> I respect them so much. And, and then I think I read in an interview you used to DJ or you're still DJ and then there are certain songs in there that you, you, you liked of theirs because they're, they're slightly industrial or... or you know, something intense yeah. like that, that would work in a club, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, it's it's almost, well, they do use almost sort of danceable beats. I mean, the club that I was DJing was a club I used to run, which was a black metal, death metal club. So it wasn't like a, I was looking for danceable songs, but it was a good one. You know, it was one I liked to end on. And, uh, you know, Mysticum's always been like one of my favorite bands, really. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that was a nice kind of... Uh, actually, Robin from the band was in UK uh, a, couple of, a couple of weeks ago. He came over. Uh, and they're about to play Bergen, I think, next week. So they don't do live shows very often, but they're really uh, unusual events because they, they put a lot into the stage show. Each member's on a different pillar. They have video, you know, video shown on the pillows and on the backdrops, and it's very high production. Easily the most high production black metal shows, I think. No kidding. Stage, yeah. See that 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 makes me even more intrigued. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got to get it's over. Just live, actually, they've just released a live. Uh, just released an album, uh, live release uh, from when they played Roadburn in Holland last year. Yeah, I think it came out actually or comes out tomorrow or came out last week. So this is something they've really put a lot into is these live shows. And uh, it's funny, Mr. Camilla, that's like a band that's really been sort of part of my journey doing these books, because when I started the first book, which was um, Black Metal Evolution of the Cult, uh, the band had split up and weren't really talking to each other and, you know, weren't doing interviews. And I kind of tracked them down and went to visit them uh, in Asker near Oslo where they live. And then in the, in the pro, you know, we've interviewed them again for the, for the fourth book, which was uh, Cold Never Die of the Megazine. So, and by that point, they had a you know record deal and they were playing live again. So it's it's kind of been a band that's um, their return has kind of come in line. With, in fact, I think when they did when they announced the new album, they, they had a photo, they had a CDR of the new album on top of the book, 
So there the Burns kind of I feel quite close to that being, you know, yeah. the fan of Asmorka because they've been quite closely in touch with the cold member diet. Yeah, and, you know, merchandise as well. Yeah, it's, it's, and in fact, speaking of that, um, I think you were referring to magazine this one, which I'm holding up, and it has the interview with uh, Mysticum and lots of others, including Head Not Found, which I found real interesting, the label. And uh, and I ordered that directly from cultneverdies.com or cultneverdies.shopify.com. And so I think we've got the ability to pull up that website here. Look, that came with a cool sampler from Odium uh, Records, and it, their website is odiumrex, R-E-X, dot com, and... I am really into this this sampler too. Uh, the first song is what 16 minutes, and I think it's I think it's got five songs in it. Yeah. This it's, is uh, yeah, it's um, I think it's some of those songs are still exclusive as well. I think they are being released elsewhere, but at the moment, I think some of those songs are still the exclusive name of that to that CD. One? The but anyways, my point is, metal fans go to coldneverdies.com and find the magazine or any of the books uh, and t-shirts and exclusive things that that Dale carries right there and I was very pleased to get this this surprise sampler with my order too so that that was just so cool who is it it's uh, Metharash Ripion the tree of Asaya Putrescent. That was the first first track. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's the first track. Yeah. Uh, taken All of them from on there are 1557 good. Rights of Nullification album. Perfect. So I didn't know anything about that band, but now I do. Yeah. Good but, band. Good. <laughs> the um, when you're when you're talking to a an extreme metal band, and they're so into black metal that they want to just release things in say Norwegian. Um or Portuguese or what have you you know is that is that kind of something that that is respected or is it just kind of saying hey we don't care about publicity we don't care about putting something out in English I mean that's always been part of black metal really is um, from the very start you know bands would release uh, releases in their own language and even have their names you know in their own language um, and you saw that a lot with uh, Norway and Sweden, and especially those bands would have, you know, Norwegian lyrics, uh, and Swedish lyrics. And actually, I was talking to Sackis, funny enough, to go back to, to Rotten Christ. I was talking to him on Thursday about that, and he was saying, because he's very into languages, really enjoys learning languages. And, um, you know, he was saying, if English isn't your mother tongue, then it doesn't make any more, it, do, it doesn't make any more sense to sing it in and English than it does French or Latin or, you know, it, mm. so I think there's an element of you don't, I mean, you sing in English if you're not English because you want more people to understand it. Yeah. Mm. It, is, it is the widest spoken language um, in the metal scene, especially. Uh, but I think it's, it's always been sort of understood that you can, of, um, you can justify singing something in your in your own language, and I mean it has to be said, you know, vocals and black metal lyrics and so on. It's it's not like hip hop or, or pop. It, 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 it's uh, you don't necessarily need to understand every lyric while you're listening to it. I mean, right. some bands you, you never would. So I think it's uh, that's probably why it translates better. You know, because some bands that could be singing in any language really. I mean, obviously, when you start reading the booklets and you start going into what the band's about, it makes it harder if it's not in your own language. But um, it's not something that hits you in the same way as if you listen to, like, German hip-hop or something. It doesn't necessarily become immediately obvious. Yeah. Do, do you get over to the States sometimes? Uh, I have been. Yeah, I don't... I don't it's not somewhere I come very often, but I have been. I, I saw a picture of you with Alice Cooper, and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. great. That was, in, uh, oh. that was in London, I think. Yeah. I interviewed him quite a few times, actually, like maybe three or four times. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't meet Alice in, uh, in America. So. All right, all right, gotcha. The, um, our bands, 
Norwegian slash uh, all black metal, any black metal bands coming back from the States moaning and complaining. And be honest with me because I think they are because we're a pain in the ass right now. We are. And and, that, and now Antifa has come over here uh, and it's just causing problems. Who's come over there and caused problems? Antifa. Ah, okay. Um, that's not exclusive to America. I mean, America right. obviously has... Trying to think how to put this diplomatically, but it did. No, it don't was, don't be diplomatic. Just just be straight. Well, there's obviously a lot of you know division in, in your society um, compared to a lot of other places, and um, I guess that impacts. You know, you, things are quite polarized with politics. You know, people tend to um, jump to the left or the right in America. I think, uh, and and things become about sort of right and wrong and left and right and and some of the subtleties get a bit lost and I think and no they're all symptoms of that really, the symptoms yeah. of people yeah. not necessarily thinking or, or um, not necessarily looking at the full picture. Marduk was here recently, <laughs> they were met with protest. Talk. Um, mm. You know, was their tour cut short? I, I just, I'm embarrassed as an American for these bands that cannot finish a tour here because yeah. of all kinds of outrage and people claiming Satanism and, and you know, pointing fingers and uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I say, that, that that was sort of going on even in 2000. You know, almost 20 years ago, uh, when the Republicans were trying to kind of get Rotten Christ banned from playing. So. It's funny how it's gone from being the right to the left, the so-called right, so-called left, who are attacking black metal. Because um, really, they, they end up being more or less the same. People trying to censor ideas. And, uh, yeah. So, all right, let's lighten yeah. it up. Uh, here's one thing that strikes me as funny sometimes: you, you go to a festival and you see a black metal band. Okay, a sinister metal. We just lump it all together and call it sinister metal here, Dale. But um, sinister metal band, and they're playing in the bright daylight at a festival. And I'm thinking, now behemoths should not be out in the sun, is what no, I'm thinking it, of myself. It, it's, you know? uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Actually, um, Emperor played recently. Uh, last weekend they played, and they played four years ago at the same festival, and they'd been one slot higher, so it'd been dark. And this time they were playing it was daylight and uh, yeah black metal it, it did better if you you know ideally it should be in a, a dark <laughs> it should be because it's dark music i think it's, it's a bit yes. strange I, I i don't think black metal musicians should be doing anything during the day that's just my opinion yeah so. no, I think, uh, that is the yeah i think is, that's the, the price you pay with um with festivals is that someone has to go <laughs> on at 3 p.m and yeah sit in the sun, you know, play in the sun. And uh, I saw Carpathian Forest, I think, like in 2002, 2003 in Germany, and one of the hottest days I can remember. Oh. It was a really good set, but it, it's very kind of incongruous to have this, uh, you know, nice bright day and there's there's black men. You know, stick it in a tent or something. It's kind yeah. Of, yeah. I, I don't, look, I, I don't mean to, you know, direct what you should do, but there's a band that might deserve a book, Carpathian Forest. I am. I just think they're they're outrageous as well. Yeah, they're great. So, um, hey, did, did have you done anything with Oborum? Yeah, the uh, the first book actually has a whole chapter on Oborum. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm very intrigued by them, and and then and then Attila's name just keeps coming up. He's recorded with them, and I. I I'm fascinated by Attila because he just seems to be popping up in every black metal CD I buy. There's his right. name. I don't know, he's done, and then he said vocals on one song and I'm trying to listen, I don't even hear the vocals. So, I don't know, but he was involved somehow, you know? Okay, was that that, uh, which, which one are you, because uh, he, he was in the, I can never pronounce the name, but he was in a French, but he was doing some stuff in a French band. Um, it might be this one here. I'm I'm trying to remember. They're just called Six. The Roman numeral. No, Roman numeral. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, he's guested on so many things. Yeah. I think actually as far back as 
99, 2000, he had a whole CD which was just him with a different band on every track. So, oh. and he, he hasn't slowed down the guest appearances since then. So I think it's, it's a bit like, uh, Nicholas is another one. Nicholas is probably yeah. sung with like 500 bands or something. No you kidding. Know, guest appearances. And, uh, Nicholas did a double album, which was one track. Each track was in with a different band. What was but, it? Was it vinyl only, or could I get that on CD? That's on CD as well. Yeah, I'm it's called. That. Uh, I don't know. It's Fifteen years of sickness or something. Something Nicholas like, <laughs> you know. It's <laughs> Fifteen years of anyway. Yeah. So um, he's he's interesting as well, and I, that's why I just think that this movie, Curse of, Curse of Alberga, um, could be just really out there. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't know much about it beyond seeing the trailer, but, uh, you know, it's uh, Nicholas and, and Adam are both talented people, so, you know, it could, uh, it, that boats well, I guess. Agreed. Um, okay, so, yes, we, we just want to encourage fans of extreme sinister metal to go to cultneverdies.com, cultneverdies.shopify.com, Take a look at everything that Dale's got there, including exclusives, T-shirts, and even Mysticum. You can buy Mysticum <laughs> shirts, etc., uh, on the website. So, when you talk to Sakis and you're working on this book, are you are you in Greece a lot? Um, we did a lot of it as we're, as we're doing this with you know video uh, video interviews and, and phone interviews. Um, Last time I was in Athens was uh, about a month ago, and that was really productive because we did a lot of sit-down interviews. And what was actually really cool was we managed to reunite the four early members of Rotten Christ, and they hadn't met, I think, for about 15, 20 years. No kidding. So we had all four of them, um, and we were going back to the kind of the places where they used to work, and, and they had their studio, because um, Rotten Christ had their own studio in 90, 90 uh, three to 95, I think, 96. So we went back to the studio, went back to his shop, because the, the uh, bass player used to have a, a, a metal shop. So it was, that was really fascinating to kind of go and uh, sort of see Athens through the eye. I haven't read this book, but I think there's a lot of history about um, Athens and kind of the Greek, the Greek scene in general, because it was a very different scene to you know, Norway or America or Sweden or Finland. Um, for example, there's a square there. I mean, there's always been a lot of political protest in uh, in Greece and, and Athens, and there's a square there which is essentially uh, anarchist and kind of, uh, I don't know how you describe it. Yeah, anarchist is probably the best way to describe it. And this is where they used to hang out as kids and get into fights with police and, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff, Molotov cocktails being thrown, and it was a pretty full-on, full-on scene. And that's kind of, it was interesting to go there with the guys from Rotting Christ and sort of, yeah, it was sort of a, yeah. a, a circle, a going full circle, really. You know, seeing this. Um, right. So I think, that yeah, the book is a lot about, a lot of it, a part of it is about these early years and how they, because their path into black metal was through punk and then grindcore and then occult death metal and so um so yeah but, but, but to answer your question we, we we did quite a lot of interviews in, in greece but we also did them in london and via phone and skype and you know email sure. occasionally sure. or something clear and it's been a long process I mean, we've been doing this book for like three years it's, it's, it's oh. quite a lot okay long so we're, we're almost ready for publication or you yeah, it's due uh, 90, uh, the last day of November. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. November, yeah. So Dale so, is, is known as the interviewer of these bands who can really dig deep and get them to open their soul, their black soul right. to him. And so I guess I'm wondering, when you're doing this, are you recording? If you sit down with a band, do you have a recorder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, always. Well, they usually have two, actually, because I've had so many experiences where one broke or <laughs> ran out of battery or, you know, fell in, a, fell in a beer glass or something. So I normally have two, two running and record everything and then transcribe that. And um, yeah, that, that, that's it, really. It's, uh, 
because you know anything that things can get sometimes it's, it's when uh, it's the little things that you catch later on sometimes you don't even catch it in the conversation at the time uh-huh. uh, that you sort of becomes an important part of, of the whole story so and isn't it interesting how the brain works that way sometimes yeah. it, it is the recording you hear later or maybe it's a band sending you some sort of like secret message <laughs> and you don't yeah, pick it up it until is. later they're dropping hints or something you know yeah there's a, i mean there's definitely you, the, the books usually involve quite a long um they're not just you know one it's not normally one short interview it's normally quite quite uh collaborative process really that's always been the way i've tried to work is having um mm-hmm. having the people involved being being more than just you know answering answering questions in a sort of passive way and becoming more involved in the process and um checking you know fact checking things and just trying to make it as informative and accurate as possible because yeah the reason for doing these books is because a lot of people don't pay as much don't take a lot of attention and don't necessarily uh, capture kind of what the artists are saying um and misrepresent people and, you know, that's what we're trying to get away from is trying to, cult never dies is essentially you know two or three of us trying to um although i write most of it but, it, but it's, it's us trying to be a kind of bring the voice of the artist to the reader you know rather than it being something yeah. where things get lost in, in that uh in that get lost in translation to some extent right and so i don't know i here's my funny question the you're talking to a band you know Becca, and we're going to talk about festivals too, because I know we love that. Yeah. So, all right. So you're talking to a band, and uh, but they're more interested in you, and they start asking you all the questions. Yeah, I don't think any bands are particularly interested in me. Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, but, but what I, I mean, what is good about the whole thing is that uh, when I started doing this book, it was very difficult because people didn't necessarily know what it was going to be like, and didn't necessarily know kind of what my aim was and whether I, you know, what my intentions were and, and all that stuff. And what's nice is that most of the people now that I ask, you know, would you be interested in being part of this project? They have already read at least one of the books. So, yeah. And actually, to be fair, they do occasionally, I mean, bands often occasionally ask me about other bands that they're yeah. fans of. See, there you go. So there is a that. I don't think they're necessarily interested in me, but they might be interested in, you know. Yeah, what some other band said. Yeah, what was it like, you know, what's it like interviewing King Diamond? Or what's it like interviewing right. Mr. Gummy, if they're Mr. Gummy, you know. Sure. So occasionally, I've, and occasionally I've put bands in contact, actually, um, after that, you know, which is, which is nice. Kind of, uh, it's not something, you know, it's not something where we're, with examining the scene or examining these bands from the outside. I think everyone involved in Cult Never Dies is from the black metal scene or from the underground metal scene. And um, there's not that us and them. I suppose that's, sure. that's, yeah, I good that's point. what I yeah. from most people who write about metal. It's not us and them. It's, it's hopefully it's, you know, sort of underground devotees kind of interviewing underground devotees for the pleasure of reading. You there know, you go for the underground devotees. It's all kind of... There you go. You mentioned King Diamond and what... It's definitely all kind of uh, part of the same, part of the same world. Gotcha. You mentioned King Diamond and what interesting guy. Uh, he lives in our part of Texas. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, right uh, north, north to, really? a little bit north of Dallas. Um, he lives here and, um, but I never see him out. Uh, I, you know, I always look Try and find him at gigs and such, and you know he doesn't wear the face paint when he's out. Right. No, I'm joking. Right. Well, I was going to say it might be harder to spot him. <laughs> but, but, um, but I do, so I'm hoping he sees me. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Run into him at the grocery store. Exchange makeup tips. It's good times. So, so, so Dale, Becca, and I love festivals. We love festival. Is your English summer just a lot of great festivals to go to? Um, not just in England. I think. I think. I mean, England is full of festivals, but obviously they're not all the kind of music we listen to. Um, I don't necessarily need to see Oasis or Coldplay. Yeah, understood. You know, 100,000 people. 
But um, we do have, you know, a few festivals, and obviously Europe's full of festivals. I mean, at this time of year, you can almost do like a festival every week for, for three months. And sure. um, I think that's one of the good things in being based in the UK or, or Europe, whether the UK is in Europe is debatable, but you can kind of, you know, you can hop, like we went to, we did a talk, a couple of talks with Mortis at a festival in Lithuania uh, about a month ago. and. You know, that's relatively easy to get to from the UK, and then we went to Estonia and Latvia, and um, yeah, there's there's a lot of festivals in Europe, but I wouldn't say necessarily the UK. We have probably two or three metal festivals, and then uh, that's about it. Is the most amazing moment, Becky? You've probably been there. For, you know, when when you you feel a lot, and you're at a gig, and maybe there's forty people. But you know there's a buzz, and you think something is about to just really be special, and it seems intimate and close, and you see kind of the birth of some great band. Yeah. Yeah, I think actually, you know, generally some small gigs are, are better for that reason. Um, yeah, I always loved the club show. I actually went to one, in, uh, you mentioned Texas, I went to one, uh, to the Dirty Dog, Yes, in uh, Austin. Yeah, 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 I quite like that place. I went, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think small clubs is always, um, it's always the most exciting, you know, you see these sort of fresh, fresh bands and, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, a nice part of, of going to live gigs. You know, it's a band that was maybe a support band ends up being something bigger down the line or something kind of, uh, you sort of see them at an early stage. Yeah. Uh, for example, there was, I think when Behemoth first played London, they were the first support of maybe six bands. I think they were supporting Deicide. Mm -hmm. It was Deicide, Ancient Rites, um, Rotting Christ, and a couple more, and then Behemoth first. And now if Behemoth, you know, play in London, they, they would be a headline, easily the headline act for, sure. any, for any kind of black metal gig. That's the way so. I feel about Rotting Christ. and. Um... You know, when they were here last, it was them, and then Watain, and then Mayhem. Now, nothing wrong with that. What a great package, but I wanted to hear more songs from Grotting Christ, really. Yeah, I think Grotting Christ never had a huge follow in the States. Actually, that tour was really good for them. Um, and they did do a good tour with Belfagor and Immolation in, I don't know, 2007, I think. Um, but the States has been... A bit of a challenge for them to break so i think that's sure. what, whereas watain and mayhem obviously mayhem of the history in watain seem to be massive in, in the states i think uh, maybe the biggest I, I don't know you probably know best than me but it feels like that's the biggest black metal band for american audiences yeah i think so and behemoth as well um uh, okay. and and mayhem yeah yeah but um dale thanks man i mean can we stay in touch and maybe do this again down the road yeah, yeah. Um, no, good. November is when the book comes out, so we'll make it Rotting Christ Talk Hour, <laughs> hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now. Yeah, with, um, yeah Rotting Christ the touring again uh, next year. The tour, no, sorry, the tour in Europe with with Watain again. Um, but hopefully, we'll be doing some events around the time of the book and. Uh, cool some book signings and, and all that kind of stuff so if any if any of the guys from rod and christ are there with you can you go ahead and, and just pull them on camera <laughs> there's none hiding in my house today, oh, okay but, yeah. <laughs> i think they're in norway they went the last time i spoke to them on saturday and they're in norway so. all right i mean that's actually one crazy thing is how i don't think there's any black metal band that played as many shows as rod and christ i think they're now on 1400. isn't that something which is crazy i mean yeah. that's that's a lot for you know for a band that's uh, not the Rolling Stones or something, <laughs> and and uh, and this this huge box set, right? That that just came out. Um, yeah, which has a, a which has an excerpt actually from the from the forthcoming box set. It's a four CD box set. Yeah, um, and that has a that has kind of a preview of, of the finished book. I uh, I would. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that's it's got kind of like a mini book in that. Um, which is maybe like 10,000, 15,000 words, and the finished book is like 90,000. So it's the finished book's actually, it's, it's a really big, you know, it's, um, and it's not just Sackers, actually, that's probably one thing that's worth mentioning is it's Themis, Morbid, uh, Jim Mutilator, 
George Emmanuel. So all the kind of members from the band, and then it also has guys from Mr. Fire, Enslave, Behemoth, Watte, and you know all these different bands have kind of had, had interaction with them, talking about their significance in the scene. So Neat. it's pretty big and kind of quite broad, broad history. Well, uh, are you saying that you wrote the mini book for the box set? Yeah, well, I wrote it, yeah, with Sackers. I yeah, mean, the, gotcha. The, the Rotting Christ book is co-written by myself and Sackers. And the book with the box set is a bit more me, I guess, but still obviously the stackers as well. So, but it's it's an excerpt of, or it's it's a part of what comes later. But there are bits in that in the box set which aren't in the book, and obviously seventy to five thousand words in the book that aren't in the in the box set. So they're quite separate, you know, separate things. So I, I felt lucky to find this one. It was kind of a compilation from Centra Media. I can't even pronounce it. Are you Ben? Uh, mm, that one. Ben. Uh, I... Yeah, that one. Ifora or Iforo? I can't it's... see it. It's oh, mm. a delay, so I'm not seeing. Then Panta Iforo. Okay, point the chair to me. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Sanatorio. It's it's a it was their Century Media compilation, and it's got some cool demo songs on it that I okay. knew were. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, I remember that. Uh, yeah, that, I, I, I don't have much to say. Yeah, it's, it's just a compilation or something. I think it was after they left Century Media and joined Season of Mist. Right. And it's this was kind of like a compilation of their stuff. I mean, there's so many different tracks they released. You know, they must have. Uh, well, I'm, we're into the three figures now, so it's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of songs to choose from if you do a best of, you know. Right. Oh, for sure. And I, I just like finding a compilation that's got the early demos on it. That, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. That. And they, the early stuff by Rotten Christ is really special um, and had a huge impact on black metal. I think that's something that maybe gets forgotten is that uh, black metal isn't just about Norway in the early 90s. Right. You know, there are a lot of people who think that is the only black metal, that's the only true black metal, that that's what kind of formed black metal. But, you know, Ross and Christ were there from 89. I mean, they formed in 88, but from 89 they were making black metal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I wasn't listening to black metal at 89, but it was definitely, a, it was always there as a, as a, as a legitimate but, but very different interpretation of black metal. And they kind of created this Greek sound and bands yeah. like Necromantia and yeah. uh, Arathron. And, you know, there were lots of other really good bands as well. But the Ross and Christ was like the gateway band for a lot of people to discover uh, Mediterranean um, black metal. So right, agreed. Uh, and like the t-shirt you're wearing, Necromantia, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Another great, another great Greek band. Great Greek band. Dale, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it, and we are going to stay in touch. And uh, man, want to hear more about when when it actually comes out. And let's just stay in touch on everything going on. I, I really appreciate you kind of joining forces with us here, and and uh, I, I just hope that we can consider you a friend and, and talk again. Yeah, thank you so much for the time and uh, the interest in what we're doing. Because uh, yeah, it's nice to it's nice that to, uh, to know we're reaching people. You are, and we want more American uh, metalheads to know all about your site and, and your works. Yeah. And actually, you know what? Our biggest, more American readers read our books than any other country. So we yeah. are connected. And, you know, that, that's like the statistics from our store is that more Americans read our books than anywhere else. So. Well, we're pushing black metal on this show. Maybe, maybe <laughs> you know. Yeah, maybe gonna... it's up to me. Yeah, maybe it's down to you. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Thank you so much, Thank man. You. We'll Cheers, talk man. Cheers. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good time. Cheers, Cheers, man. Oh, so cool. Okay, so I know we went on some off roads there and got into the, you know, these crazy black metal bands and all that, which I love. So, but we were talking about festival experiences, yeah. and I, I know you love doing that, and uh, and it, it just so fun. So in Europe and England, mm. it's they take advantage of the summer months, yeah. which are short. Yeah. that have some sunshine and uh, do all these outdoor fests. Absolutely, know, so. I would too. Heck yeah. 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 And some of them are extreme, oh, I'm dangerous, sure. in the woods, crazy, with extreme black metal. 
<laughs> All right. So what uh, what comments do we have, or anything anything going on, Darby? Um, we have one comment that says Mustaine's a douche. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yay! If he dislikes Rod and Christ, right. they must be worth checking out. Oh, okay. All right. And then I, uh, if anybody is curious, I put the links to Cult Never Dies. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Just the regular website and the Shopify in the chat. Yeah, okay. Now, um, I know we're going to indulge a little bit here. You are an uber Roman, uh, Ramones fan. Yeah. And um, Darby's got the Ramones shirt. Uh, and so, and Janie Slash got you that cool vintage I know. button. I yeah. know, it's so cool. Oh, so cool. The Rocket to Russia, which yeah, must have been in the 70s. Yeah, it was, uh, I think on the button it says 1977. So. Just like... Ramones coming along and blessing the doors off of rock and roll. This is how I feel that The Damned did it with Monty on our show and how black metal did it, you know, when it was born in the early 90s, mid 90s, yeah. and, and, and such. And I think anytime there's a big shift in, uh, talk close to me. Oh, in, in music in general, if anytime there's, there's something new, there's a big shift. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to blow you away, you know? doesn't matter what the genre is, you know? When somebody does something that's amazing and new, it's gonna, you're gonna be, somebody's gonna be wowed, and right? crazy. Yeah. And dangerous and different. And, and, and fun. It and has fun. to be fun. You're right. It has to be fun. Dale mentioned dance beats. Yeah. He, re yeah. he you know, he, he DJed a club. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So. No. It's not fun. People don't keep interest, you know? So if they don't walk away going, oh man, that was amazing. That was so fun. Then they don't, you know, they don't want to come back and do it again. So, I guess what? It'll be fun. There's a cool uh, horror movie out. Mm -hmm. It was filmed here in Dallas. It's called The Littlest Reich, and it's Puppet Master. Mm -hmm. Puppet Master. And so I think we should just show it yeah. and then talk about it. All right. And it's out right now. I think you can get it right now on iTunes. There you but go. also at the theater. All right. I think. Yeah. Very cool. Warning. This motion picture is one of the most violent films ever made. There are 21 scenes of puppet violence and sadistic cruelty graphically shown. The content and subject matter may be upsetting for those under 18, those with weak hearts, and those of delicate nature. This cellar workshop is where Andre Toulon manufactured puppets. It is unclear how many of these puppets were made, though 60 or so of them are expected to be in Postville by tomorrow for the auction. That's not mine. I don't really know how that got here. Maybe it walked. Hello. Jesus. Well, you definitely seem like a toy that a maniac would make. What the? Why would anybody create a Nazi puppet? They're little, they're fast. Anne Frank was hiding in her attic, puppet could find her. Don't ask, don't ask. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything more scary? Darby, this is for you now. Mm -hmm. That than, than something that's small and fast and wicked. Not I I, I, I can't I can't think of anything. Like do you remember the first alien, you know, when they were real little scurrying around? Sure. Right? So yeah. so we have Nazi puppets, okay? And we have to do we have to we have to get rid of them. And they they succeed apparently in this movie, but yes. It looks like an amazing, an amazing yeah. cast. So it? yeah, it really does. So it's part of the Fangoria family, that, yeah. which is now a Dallas company. Didn't know that. Yeah. That's great. Incredible. Yeah. And the pr production team also made Bone Tomahawk, which you may mm -hmm. have seen on Netflix, and The Meg, that big mm -hmm. big mega shark movie. Yeah. Megalodon. Yeah. 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 Have you seen it? I, uh, I've seen trailers. The Meg. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs>
Anyway, same team. So there it is. Puppet Master getting a lot of, uh, I don't know, talk and attention right now. So yeah. we like those extreme stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And nothing's creepier than dolls and puppets. Come on. Right. I mean. Yeah. Look at yeah. our table. Yeah. That's why we do it. Yeah. Hey, we have a company that is our partner. They're called mm -hmm. Corpse Factory. And they work with Corpse Paint Show. Mm -hmm. Us. Right. And they actually have a lot of cool shit on their website. CorpseFactory.com. There it is right there. You should check this out. Should. Because Darby needs all this. Darby needs all this? No way. You don't think so? Um, Becca needs all this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, maybe a Look, couple of Cre things. They got Creepsville. They've got different different styles and brands. Great and brand. Great brand. You want to go to CorpseFactory.com mm -hmm. for all your cool horror-related clothing items right. and other stuff. Swag. You got to. All the swag. Yeah. All the swag. Yeah. Did you enjoy being on our humble little show? Absolutely. Good. I, I know fun. that some of those discussions were craziness and, and you know, maybe down the road. You come back. Sure. We'll do some fun stuff. Yeah. And next week, Janie Slash will be back in the Cannot studio. Wait. You're going to watch and support Super show missed her. Yes. Yeah. I know. So, yeah. Almost three weeks ago. I know. I know. Yeah. It sucks. So. Darby, anything else cool on uh, chat and all that? Besides Dave Mustaine being a douche? <laughs> um, I think maybe they should advertise like that. Dave uh, Mustaine's a douche, so you yes, dot com. check us out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a new website. Uh, um, well, people are going to be mad about that. Look, we don't want to make personal attacks. Yeah. We're yeah. just saying that we felt he was out of line with some comments he made at that festival. And we did not make the comment. <laughs> oh, that was from There's Ziggy. That. All right. Yeah. Ziggy, you got to say hi to us, man. We want to see you. Look at that friendly face. <laughs> Takes care of us. Appreciate you so much, man. What a great show we've had. <laughs> yeah. Dale it's Patterson. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Very cool guy. And the legendary Dan right here. Yeah. That is amazing. Next time they're in Dallas, we want them in this studio. Yeah. You know? That would be so cool. Do a little acoustic set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That being yeah, like that would happen. Yeah. You know <laughs> so, what? You can always dream. That's cool. I know. Well, we're trying to build a brand. Yeah, that's cool. Corpse yeah. paint brand. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Darby, you back at school? Yeah. And yeah. you like slash hate it, right? Uh, Let's put it that way. Yeah, gotcha. I like your glasses. Thank you. They're, They're badass. Really I like you. them a lot. Yeah. She kind of looks like Harry Potter, but it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of cool. Kind of cool. cool. It's an aesthetic. Sort of a nod, you know. Ziggy, what else we got to cover? Did I, I send you some pictures? Oh, events coming up at Gas Monkey. Uh, God, Ogre is going to be here on the 27th, stuff. which is yeah. week from Monday, if I have that right. So Ogre, the uh, Ogre show at Gas Monkey is going to be badass. All right, we're hoping to have Ogre as a guest. No. Coming up. Yeah. That'd be incredible. Like next weekend. Wow. Um, we're hoping. They're trying to work that out. No promises here. I think John just wet himself. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so. Totally cool. Now, uh, there's the alarm. That's fucking tonight. Wow. At Gas Monkey. You know that song, Rescue Me, Rain mm -hmm. in the Summertime, all those good things? Yeah. That's uh, that's the alarm tonight. Ogre, there it is, August 27th, Gas Monkey Bar and Grill. They've got so many great events coming up. And then uh, Claudio Simonetti's um, Suspiria, they're mm -hmm. showing the film while he's playing the live score from that movie. Oh, that'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, this is a picture I took at Gas Monkey. There's, uh, yeah, he's playing Goblin is, is his band. Um, and the soundtrack to Suspiria while they show Suspiria. Yeah. And uh, The Alarm, which is tonight. Be Love incredible. you guys so much. we got to wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. Sure, thank, thank you for you. having appreciate us. Appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Ziggy. Thank you very much, and we'll thank see you next you, week. Thank you. Please visit our donate page. Yeah! Corpse Paint Show. Every Sunday we're here live. We're going to give you 90 minutes of live, great, your reverence shit. And also just talk about Satan and talk about movies and talk about Jenny Slash's uh, weekly dose of horror. Yeah. Texas Fright My Weekend. I am here with Dee Wallace. Don't just don't start my boobs all the time. Sure. I do get comments from occasionally religious fans. I've seen people stopping that wag their finger at me. For a ring. The Gold Pain Show Rules!